Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking a little bit about the expectations for the final project for our classical control theory class. So let me bring up this document. So this should be on the website and will help everyone understand what we're doing. And really for the final project, this is really a little bit of a choose your own adventure and just investigate something that you think is interesting and somewhat related to something that we talked about related to controls or dynamics this quarter. Um, the idea is you'll kind of pick something that you think would be interesting to look at, spend a couple of hours playing around with it, and then present what you learned and share your results with the class in an oral presentation on the day of the final. And then in addition to that, you'll also submit a small write-up um, to document your findings. So that's the game plan. It's really just these two components. You'll see it, your grade is broken up evenly between the oral presentation and the write-up. So again, let's talk about this. Um, like I said, the idea is you're just going to pick some topic that you think is interesting that is related to a class concept. So I've got a couple of ideas and potential um, things to get your brain spinning and thinking about what might be appropriate. So. For example, you could play with our planar vehicle, you could build like a velocity controller for it, or you could try to simulate the planar vehicle following some type of a mission. In fact, I've got some code to kind of help you get started on this. But you don't have to stick with this planar vehicle. You can really do anything that's related to controls and dynamics, right? If you want to play around with, uh, you know, a, a mass spring damper and look at its frequency response, maybe you have two, two uh, springs or two masses or something like that feel free to do this. And again, I'll just throw a couple of these out here. You can basically think about some of these and read over these. I'm happy to talk about these ideas. Or if you have something that you think would be fun, shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. But I want everyone to basically look at something that's interesting, but not too onerous and too daunting. So I'm really hoping people spend maybe five to 10 hours total on this entire project. Um, and that includes getting ready for your, you know, putting slides together and writing up your report. So really, uh, th this is not designed to be a thesis or anything like that. It's really designed to be you find one little thing that you think is fun, run a couple of simulations, and then share your results. So let's talk about that. Um, okay. So the first item is the oral presentation. So everyone should already have a meeting request on their calendar. I think I sent that out with teleconference information. So what we're gonna do on the day of the final, instead of gathering together live on campus and taking a test, we're gonna gather um, a, uh, on line in our virtual space and everyone will have a amount of time in which they're allowed to present their findings so the actual schedule of presenters and the start times and end times are all on the class website so there's an updated version of this document on the class website so please take a look at that to see where your time slot fits in and where you'll be expected to present so the idea is you're going to have a certain amount of time. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be five minutes, 10 minutes. It's going to depend on the number of students here. But once you see that, we're going to give you that time. And that is your time. You can do whatever you want as long as your entire presentation fits into this time window. So we're going to have to be pretty ruthless with timing. So if you end up going over, um, I'm going to have to start muting people and uh, uh, sh letting other people share the screen because we don't want to step on other people's time. We're going to have to keep a pretty tight schedule. So make sure that anything that you want to show, if that is slides, if that's a live demonstration, if that's just you talking to the rest of the class and, ha and engaging with the discussion, any of those are fine as long as it fits into this window. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, like you saw on this schedule, you're only going to be presenting for a small amount of time. The rest of the time, we're going to run this a bit like a mini conference where we're going to expect everyone to kind of attend all the conferences and all the presentations and support your fellow classmates. So we're going to expect everyone to be there for all of the presentations, even if you're not presenting at the, the current time. So we're going to be taking attendance periodically and to encourage um, attendance and engagement. If you miss a presentation or you're late to any of them, we are going to penalize 25% of your total grade for each one that you miss. So obviously you don't want that happening. So just, um, I encourage everyone to be there and attend and support everybody else in the class. Now, you will be uh, expected to present your material from your machine. So again, we're all gonna be there in the virtual room. Um, at your time, we're just going to turn it over to you. You can share your screen, um, unmute yourself, and basically do whatever you want. <laughs> you know, most people I think are going to want to present slides. That seems to be the easiest way to get information across quickly. But you don't have to have slides. You could have a live demonstration. Maybe you want to run a Simulink model with something that you built and you want to show everyone. Feel free to just 
um, share your screen, show it running, talk us through what's going on. Um, that's totally fine. But you will be expected to share it from your machine. So we're just going to turn it over to you. And during that time, you're going to be running the show. Now, that being said, sometimes there are extenuating circumstances where people might not be able to present live. Either they're out of the office, they're out on PTO, they're not in the country. Um, it's a weird time for them. So if if presenting at your scheduled time um, live, if that presents a uh, undue hardship to you, please let me know uh, very well in advance. And what we can do in that case is coordinate to have you either send me a movie, like a movie file, an MP4 or something like that, or you can maybe post something on YouTube. And then what I will do is I will uh, play that video during your time slot on your behalf if you're not able to attend live. So again, make sure you get that to me and the TA at least 24 hours in advance so that we can uh, prepare for that. Lastly, if you do have slides, um, please submit a PDF of those slides to the class website. Um, it just helps with grading so I can, when I'm going through, I can remember exactly what you were talking about during your oral presentation. So that's the expectation for the oral presentation side of things. Um, let's talk about the other second major component. This is really simple. The other major component is just a very simple write-up. And what I mean by write-up, I, I, I hesitate to call this a report or a document or anything like this. It's really just supposed to be a couple of notes. Maybe um, that you weren't able to talk about everything you wanted to in your oral presentation. Well, feel free to throw that into your write-up. This write-up should be a really quick, concise description of what you did. Include you know, some plots, include references, include whatever you like, as long as it is less than two pages. So that includes pictures, figures, tables, references, um, anything like that has to fit in two pages. So I'm only going to look at the first two pages of whatever PDF you submit. Um, so just keep that in mind um, here. And again, there will be another submission portal on the class website where you can submit your PDF uh, of your write-up. So that's pretty much it. There's only kind of two deliverables for the final presentation, uh, as we discussed, is show up on the day of the final and present your uh, material orally uh, during your time slot. Basically, just make a presentation, talk about it, and then submit the um, write up to the class website so we can grade that and take a look. Okay. Um, and again, like I said, there's an updated version of this document on the website with the proper due date um, for this particular final. Now, um, that being said, like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm trying to make this easy for everyone. So I don't want people to have to, to, to you know, spin up a lot of infrastructure to get this going. So I did want to provide some files that might help people, especially if you want to play around with uh, designing a controller or a guidance system for your planar vehicle. So um, let me pull that up. Okay, so if you go to the description of the video, the YouTube video you're watching right now, there should be a link to the GitHub page, just like we've been doing all the other lecture notes and things like that and code for the class. That should take you here. So what I've got is some files that will help you um, stand up a simulation of your planar vehicle. So if you go ahead and clone this repo or download these files, these should hopefully stand on their own and run on their own. What you're going to want to do is, again, obviously download those into a into a folder and um, this main waypoint guidance demo students.m file that's this one right here this should helpfully uh, or this should hopefully get things stood up it's a really simple skeleton and maybe what we can do is let me show you let's just talk through what this does um, I've got a simulink model and in fact maybe it will be helpful to open that thing and we can take a look at this simulink model so what this does is um, I don't have a plant model, right? You should have already made your plant model. Remember back in homework six and homework seven, we made a plant model of our planar vehicle. So you should hopefully be able to delete this and drop in your planar model and have this thing work. All I'm doing right now is I'm just generating some dummy states of position and orientation. Um, right now, you can kind of see it's just, it's, it's going in like an elliptical pattern and it's just spinning around. In fact, we're going to see that in just a second. But all this is, is this is my dummy plant model where it just spits out state information. And then what I've got is I've got, you know, like we talked about earlier, we've got an inner loop controller where you can use the um, axial thrust or the U1 control to kind of control the velocity. And then you can use the um, moment controller to control the angle. So again, these, if you open these up, right, these are also blank. You're free to drop in your own controller, right? We talked about these in various homeworks of how to build these controllers. So you could drop in a 
controller here if you'd like, and then you can drop in another controller here if you like, and then play around with it. And then what I did on top of this is I tried to add a couple of um, bells and whistles that might be interesting. So I added in addition a guidance loop on this. So now what you're able to do is try to define a flight path or uh, a series of waypoints and hopefully the vehicle will try to track towards those waypoints. So again, I'll let you dig into this if you're interested in what it's doing, but all it's doing is basically it's managing a flight route. So you define um, a flight route, which is a series of waypoints, and this system should just keep track of when you hit a waypoint, trigger it to the next waypoint, and et cetera, et cetera. So, Again, I won't go into too much detail about this, um, but what I will show is one more component of this model that might be interesting and helpful is that I've got a visualization package stood up down here using Simulink 3D animation. So what this does is if, um, in fact, when you open the model, it should open up the Simulink 3D animation, but if it doesn't on your machine, what you can do is click on this little arrow to look underneath the mask, or you can right click on this block. Uh, come on, there we go, say mask, look under mask that'll do the same thing you'll come to here and there's this vr sync block here if you double click on that that should open up the virtual environment right here so all i've done is i've just got a little simulation of a vehicle like your planar vehicle and what we're going to do is we're going to drive this simulation using the uh simulink state so let's take a look at the script and hopefully you'll see all this thing in action in just a second but what this does is it always it, it you know it sets up all the parameters of your model it defines what the the flight route or the series of waypoints looks like and then it plots it for you so in fact let me put a breakpoint right here right before we run the simulation just so you can see what's going on um so this pulls this guy up right and again i've got a couple of examples of how to set up so in this case i set up a figure eight pattern so you can see here's waypoint one two three four five six so this thing just goes in a figure eight if you want to see it going in a you know counterclockwise box or a clockwise box just comment out the appropriate section of code right and that should hopefully set up your flight route so all this is doing is we basically initialized all the variables and all of the data structures needed to run this sim so what we're now going to do is run the simulation again let me put a let me put a breakpoint right here and before i hit this and hit go. Let me come back to the Simulink model and again, open up that Simulink 3D animation window like this. Let me put this over here. And uh, let me see if I can do this quickly. Oh, in fact, you know what I could probably do? I bet I can probably dock that. Um, give me a second here. I don't know if I can dock this. Sometimes it's, oh yeah, I bet, I bet it'll let us. There we go, okay. So let's dock that there. Let's just uh, continue. So now we're gonna run this and you should see this initial, there it goes, right? So these dummy states, I'm just spinning this thing around in a in an, kind of an elliptical pattern here. Obviously, your system will hopefully look better once you drop in your actual systems. But then after that, um, I've just got a bunch of plotting that will just hopefully plot the trajectory of the vehicle, plot how close you are to the next waypoint, all that kind of stuff. So again, this is something that I hope will help get people started so you can just drop in your functionality as appropriate into this and then that's one thing you could do for this project is is basically you know look at designing a control system for this so i'll give this to everyone feel free to use this if you'd like but you absolutely don't have to use this if you don't want to if you want to look at something completely different um feel free to do so uh just make sure that you document it appropriately and share it in a way that we can all understand what you did so again like i said don't feel obliged to look at this um, I'll just provide this to everyone in case you're interested. Um, oh, sorry, these plots showed up on my other picture. Maybe I should show that to you. Okay, yeah, like for example here, here, you know, here's the flight plan that we wanted, but obviously we did not track it. We were just doing some crazy maneuver right here. Like I said, hopefully when you put in the actual planar vehicle and put in your actual controllers, this will hopefully look a little bit better. Um, okay, so that being said, I think that is probably a good spot to leave it. Hopefully that gives everyone an idea on the expectations and the logistics and the mechanics of how we're going to execute this final project. So let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, um, I look forward to seeing everyone at the final and we can uh, talk about this in the coming weeks because I know we do have a couple of weeks before the actual final, but hopefully this gets everyone starting to think about what they might want to do um, when we get there. Okay, thanks everyone. I will talk with everyone later. Bye.